Hello everyone, today I will talk about ways in which you can damage your formation and equipment during well stimulation using hydrochloric acid. Of course, hydrochloric acid or HCl is the main acid that we use to stimulate carbonates. Here you can see samples of calcite and dolomite. When they react with HCl, products of the reaction are calcium and magnesium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Salts of calcium and magnesium chloride are soluble in water and therefore these reaction products are easy to remove after the acidizing job. In sandstones we commonly use so-called mud acids which are essentially mixtures of hydrochloric and hydrofluoric acids. HF works on dissolution of silica and aluminosilicates and HCl keeps the pH low to prevent detrimental precipitates. So HCl is extremely useful in well stimulation, but at the same time, we must consider certain nuances when we are planning to use it. Let's discuss these nuances next. First, since HCl is a strong acid, we must understand the nature of its reaction with carbonates. Here we can see a carbonate reservoir. A vertical portion of the well is cased, cemented, perforated and ready to produce oil. However, we have some damage in the near wellbore zone. Normally, our goal is to create a wormhole and bypass the damage zone. This would allow oil flow through this channel instead of low permeability damaged zone. This would be our goal for a reservoir with moderate formation temperature. However, at high temperatures, HCl reaction with calcite is especially vigorous. As a result, HCl injected into high temperature carbonate reservoir would cause surface dissolution instead of a wormhole creation. In this case, stimulated zone doesn't go beyond the damage zone and oil flow is still restricted by this low permeability zone. So to summarize, it is very challenging to design acidizing jobs using HCl for high temperature carbonate reservoirs. HCl is a strong acid and it will react with steel components down hole. For example, submersible pumps such as saccharide pump and electrical submersible pump. After exposure to HCl, they may get damaged beyond repair. Well tubulars, screens and completions are no exceptions and will suffer from contact with HCl. Corrosion inhibitors should always be used with HCl. But at high temperatures, even in presence of corrosion inhibitors, HCl may still cause severe corrosion. On a side note. In some wells we use corrosion resistant alloys or CRAs instead of carbon steel pipes. CRA pipes can be 10 or more times more expensive than regular carbon steel pipes. But don't be misled by the name because corrosion resistant alloys are not protected from HCl corrosion. There are different types of CRAs with varying composition of chromium, nickel and molybdenum. But generally, unlike regular carbon steel surface, CRAs have a passive chromium oxide film on their surface to provide corrosion protection. Chromium oxide layer protects pipes from corrosion caused by carbon dioxide and in some cases hydrogen sulfide. But it is extremely important to understand that HCl will dissolve this protective layer and corrode CRA pipes. Once some areas of the CRA pipe surface become active, it will result in rapid localized corrosion. Therefore, to summarize this, due to corrosion, there are significant limitations on use of HCl in high temperature conditions and in wells completed with corrosion resistant alloys. It is easy to contaminate HCl with ferric iron. Let's follow the pathway of acid. First we mix it in a mixing tank or bring it with an acid transport trailer. Then it goes in the acid pumper unit then it is being pushed through a flow line equipment and finally it goes down hole. And sometimes we use coil tubing to inject it. However, in both cases HCl contacts surfaces of various tanks and pipes and oftentimes surfaces of such equipment have rust on it. Moreover, when HCl travels down hole it will get in contact with other materials. For example, in wells with acidic gases such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide we can often find iron sulfides and iron carbonates build up on the pipe walls. And as we inject fresh live HCl through the tanks, pumps and well tubulars, 
acid will dissolve all these different corrosion products. This will contaminate HCl with various materials, including ferric iron. Next, acid with iron moves into the reservoir. Initially, pH is still close to zero and ferric iron will remain dissolved and will not cause any problems. However, once HCl starts reacting with the rock, pH will increase and ferric iron will precipitate. Precipitation type will depend on conditions, normally in sour wells, and by sour we usually imply wells that contain hydrogen sulfide. So in sour wells, ferric iron will precipitate as iron sulfide. And in sweet wells, or in wells that do not contain hydrogen sulfide, ferric iron will precipitate as ferric hydroxide. These precipitations can cause significant formation damage. In this example, they block pore spaces between grains of quartz in a sandstone reservoir. This may restrict the flow of hydrocarbons and impact the production rate. Therefore, to successfully apply HCl and matrix stimulation, we must properly prepare for delivery and injection of the acid. This may require removal of rust and inorganic scale prior to the treatment. Otherwise, we might end up with iron sulfide and ferric hydroxide precipitation damage. Aside from the precipitation issues, presence of ferric iron in HCl is very undesirable because it may negatively affect work of different additives used in well stimulation. For example, when we prepare viscoelastic surfactants for well acidizing, contaminated HCl may cause phase separation and even precipitation of viscoelastic surfactants. This would cause formation damage while canceling performance of the VES. In short, when designing well stimulation using HCl, we should take measures to avoid contamination with ferric iron. In part 2, I'll discuss three more cases in which HCl may not be applicable for well stimulation. I'll provide details regarding HCl interaction with crude oil, precipitation of calcium sulfates, and HCl reaction with zeolite and elite. Thank you for watching. Please share with your colleagues and let me know what you think in the comment section. Have a great day.